Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, let's talk about smartphones and have we reached the peak, uh, what do you say, pinnacle of uh, smartphones and where do you, we actually go from here? And guys, if you noticed uh, the smartphones in the last couple of uh, generation, past six months, a year, if you notice, uh, we are not seeing a huge improvements. Yes, we are getting slight refinements and stuff, but I feel in every technology, there's a curve like this and now, in the traditional smartphone phase, I think so we are reaching that plateau. So we are not getting some huge innovations and stuff. Yes, we are seeing an increase of speed a little bit, slight improvements in camera, multiple cameras, but real innovation is not happening. And this actually happened even in the PC industry, if you recall, uh, uh, about last decade, around 2005, 2007, uh, we started to see very good computers, quad core, etc. But suddenly the peak was reached and people upgrading to new computers didn't find a huge difference and i think so the smartphone revolution actually started uh, during that uh, time frame for example uh, the i first iphone i fire recall was uh, launched in 2007 and then we started seeing and then android came into space uh, uh, then we started seeing uh, true smartphones that were like mini computers and for many people uh, especially in India I think so the, their first computing was actually done on a smartphone rather than a PC and uh, slowly the smartphone became an integral part of it and we see saw huge improvements uh, every generation from let's say 2012 to 13 14 the processor speeds used to increase quite a bit the camera sensors improved quite a bit but now lately as I've told you we are reaching that curve and lately if you have even a flagship Android smartphone past two years and if you look at the latest uh, flagship Android phones in real world usage you won't find that much of a difference because the rate of innovation the smartphone uh, the regular smartphone has become so good to improve it you have to do something radically different and that is not happening yes we are playing around a little bit with camera uh, the stereo speakers are becoming a little bit uh, improved but i won't call it a drastic improvement every generation and that's what i'm noticing i made some notes so let's uh, uh, go over there and I feel uh, in India specifically, uh, the real smartphone innovation started uh, last couple of years thanks to Geo. The mobile data became so affordable and because of the smartphones, people got connected to internet and that saw, saw a huge bump. But now I think so, most people who want to be connected are actually connected and these days we get some very good smartphones even in the mid-range and the price point of about 10,000. Let me talk about one thing because I hear this quite a bit uh, in the comment section. Uh, whenever new phone is launched i'm covering it or whatever some people uh, talk about it okay i purchased this smartphone that was just launched about six months should i upgrade to this so there is a fomo that is fear of missing out and these days smartphone manufacturers are launching so many devices so quickly that users feel that they are getting missed out but that's not that's a simple myth to give you an idea uh, these are some of the most powerful smartphones this is the asus rog phone 3 uh, this is the samsung uh, uh, note 20 ultra uh, and uh, yes these have got very good processor in fact the uh, one of the fastest processors that you can get on android that's the snapdragon 865 plus on this rog phone 3 but uh, if i compare the daily usage performance to even about a snapdragon 855 in daily usage i don't notice that much of a difference yes in benchmarks uh, obviously this will get better benchmark scores but is that translating to real world performance difference that you will do every day and the answer is no for about 95 percent of the users uh, to give you an analogy uh, let's talk about speed and cars this is very easy to do uh, for example let's say your smartphone was old one think of uh, it as a that maximum speed that it can go is about 50 kilometer and next after a year you get a new smartphone that can go up to a speed of 80 kilometers you'll notice a huge difference because that 50 was restricting you but now the stage is like that for high-end smartphones you could say the speed of a Snapdragon 855 I'm just giving you a very vague example is about let's say 170 kilometers it can go to the maximum speed and this new Snapdragon 865 can go up to 180 but the thing is that in real world usage you simply cannot go that fast so this incremental speed increase that we are seeing now has become sort of a mood thing it's just for bragging rights yes you have the latest processor i don't but in real world usage i would say you won't find a big difference in fact i would say even the mid-range processors for example the snapdragon 7x series let's say 712 720 etc are so good 
in terms of speed if i have to give again let's say they can go up to 125 or something like that speed but realistically you will not touch those speeds so the fomo of upgrading every year for a faster processor is just moot right now because real in real world usage you will not notice that perceptible difference if you upgrade it that quickly and i would say no point upgrading it that quickly and second thing is many people get influenced by cameras because these days we see many phones having that four four cameras or whatever and people think it is better but this has been proven wrong again and again by pixel they mostly put just one primary camera at the back and that beats many of the smartphones, even higher price smartphones. So it's not just about number of cameras. In fact, many vendors, some vendors are also faking the cameras. They just put four, but they hardly use it. So again, don't fall into traps like this. It's not like if you have a 64 megapixel or something would be way better than what you are having right now. In fact, uh, I have seen a lot of smartphones that are having a lower 48 megapixel perform better than 64. So it uh, depends on the manufacturer how well he optimizes it and a manufacturer if he is launching less products will spend more time to improve a product but another manufacturer if say he's launching a new phone every every month or 45 days will he put that much effort in optimizing that smartphone so that is something you have to note and i frankly feel too many smartphones are getting uh, launched and if you have a good enough smartphone that you've bought recently just don't get into that fomo because just that new smartphone is coming out with the new latest processor for example, the latest is the 8 Snapdragon 865 Plus. If you already have an 855, I will tell you that in real world usage, you won't find a huge difference uh, that you should upgrade upgrade when you really need it because this is a FOMO that is happening a lot in the industry and we have reached that stage of pinnacle because uh, if you upgrade even to the latest processor the pro perceivable difference the actual difference that you notice everyday working is simply not there and also uh, just go don't go with the hype of four cameras five cameras at the back just look at the image quality actual image quality that you would get because we as indians what i have noticed is that get impressed with numbers big numbers four cameras oh 64 megapixel 48 megapixel 108 megapixel and we just go ahead and buy it and these companies know that and that's how they are marketed so be a little bit careful because we have reached such a stage that even mid-range smartphones that we are getting around uh, let's say 12,000, 14,000 uh, are actually really really good so just when you are upgrading or buying to just dying to buy that new smartphone think about it do you really need that and i feel we have reached that stage of uh, what do you say stagnation in the current smartphone form factor and i think so things need to change and i feel it will change but we are in a situation right now yes foldables offer a lot of opportunities and new form factors but the thing is that these foldables are super super expensive as of now the samsung fold cost what two thousand dollars the new one is also being rumored to be about that so uh, these are very expensive so this will take a lot of time to come into the mainstream they have to go below thousand dollars microsoft also is now trying something we don't even know what will work will this form factor work or some other kind of a foldable will work so that's why we are going to see a lot of new form factors just about yesterday microsoft also announced the microsoft surface duo a new take on it uh, so i think so this will be a transition phase for the next couple of years and finally eventually we will see foldables that will be the new wave uh, how will it be when it will be is a big question because right now these foldables are just too expensive and they really need to come down in the price point to be uh, attractive to normal users but that will definitely take a lot of time uh, so again if you already have a good smartphone just don't have that fomo syndrome that you need to upgrade to a latest and the greatest and these days guys what is happening in the latest and the greatest uh, they are just playing around with the colors polishing stuff it's like become the fashion industry now instead of real technological innovations that you will see it's become of like what do you say how cool it looks how so we are into that but i hope things change with the foldables and uh, i don't know what else we were having a lot of hope with smart watches but that category just simply did not explode uh, because still good smart watches are very expensive so i hope uh, 
this changes and uh, we move to a new form factor but i feel uh, that will take a couple of uh, years from now hopefully it happens in the next two three years and we get new innovative form factors not just what microsoft is trying samsung is trying we don't know what else we could be doing with foldables but i feel the next wave of computing is going to be starting now because we have reached that point regular the form factor that we have with the smartphone we have reached that pinnacle point where improving it considerably is now very difficult anyways uh, also about 5g i just want to talk about 5g because many of you have actually talked about asked me about 5g 5g yes will come in india guys and probably geo and airtel will come will get it but i don't expect it realistically to roll out um, until 2022 and the thing is that many uh, users are asking me should we buy 5G smartphones right now. The fact is that right now in India, uh, the government has not even uh, given out the spectrum for 5G. The bidding has to uh, be done. In. And right now, uh, we don't even know exactly what bands will be used uh, in India for 5G. Yeah, I think so. We In India, we will go with the sub 6 gigahertz uh, band, not millimeter wave. Uh, but again, in that also, we have different bands. And uh, many uh, smartphone manufacturers now will be touting out a lot of new models claiming that they have 5G. Yes, technically they have 5G, but do they have the bands that will be used in India? Are those bands supported by that smartphone is the big question. And because in mid-range, this can be a big problem because we know uh, on a mid-range smartphone, they will not support all the bands. So if, even if you buy a new smartphone right now with 5G, uh, unless the government policy is very clear, what 5G bands are we using? It's a hit or a miss if you're going to buy a 5G smartphone right now. For example, if you buy a new 5G smartphone right now and that band, is actually uh, uh, not supported in India. Yes, technically your phone has 5G, but it won't be able to connect to the 5G networks in India. So again, uh, beware of that. Uh, let's wait. I think so the government should give clarity on 5G, what bands will be used by these ISPs. Only once we have that clarity, you should go with 5G. And as of now, I would say, I wouldn't recommend 5G because we don't know when it will come. It might come in 2022 or because uh, again, testing has to be done. A lot of things have to be done. Realistically, I would say 2023 when the prices will go down so does it make that much sense to buy a smartphone paying a huge premium right now and getting 5g if you're getting that 5g smartphone for the same price what you're paying then okay go with it but again there is no guarantee especially in the mid-range uh, segment what 5g bands what they are currently providing will that work in india or not that is a question that you need to ask anyways guys that's it for now thanks for watching this is ranjit and i hope to see you in my next video take care guys